Hello everyone. Today's video is the second video in the debugging debug series. And today I'm gonna to be talking about debugging a React application. I know that I talked about debugging a Java application in my last video wherein I created a Spring Boot application and I added debug points over there. And I showed you guys how to debug there and change certain values even as the application is running. So we were able to see that even as the application was running without restarting it, we could change some of the values within the server and simulate some of the conditions or evaluate some of the parts in the code to make sure that we wouldn't have to revisit the code and change it every single time. Uh, and we didn't have to restart the application every single time. And we did it using an ID called IntelliJ IDEA. Today, I'm gonna be showing you how to debug a React application. And my choice of ID this time around is Visual Studio Code. I know it's a very popular ID. A lot of people use it for uh, creating their JavaScript applications. Um, in a similar manner, I'm using the same. And I know that I'm sure a lot of you would be comfortable with coding in Visual Studio Code. So we're just gonna do the, do the activity in this. Um, what I've done is I've created a sample React application. Um, I'll talk about the application that I've created. Uh, it's a slot machine application. It's uh, very similar to what you see, the, the slot machine game that you see in casinos, where you go and you pull a lever and then a tumbler rotates numbers. And a certain if you get a certain combination of numbers, then you hit a jackpot. So I've taken the liberty to create a game out of that uh, using React. And at the back end, I have Node.js. I'm also be going to I'm also going to be showing you how to uh, debug the Node.js backend using Visual Studio Code. So all of that is going to be part of this video. Um, and essentially, in the application, what we do is once we log in, uh, we get certain chances, and then once the chances are exhausted, um, if you don't have any coupons to redeem, uh, coupons are accumulated by the numbers that you get. If with certain number combinations, you get a certain score, and the score accumulates. And if it accumulates to a thousand, then you get a coupon. And once you have to run out of chances to spin, spin the wheel, then you have to redeem a coupon and then it keeps the game going. So that's basically the scenario for the slot machine that I've created. I'm going to be talking you through debugging this application and making sure that I'm able to test certain scenarios and change up uh, some of some of the values at runtime as well. So in front of you, what you see is uh, the code that I've written. Uh, written. Uh, within the ID, Visual Studio Code. Uh, I'm now going to go to the application. So that's the landing page per se. It's not world class, but uh, it'll do for the intents and purposes of this demonstration. Um, I'm going to log in. Uh, but even as I'm logging in, I'm going to call your attention to uh, my browser of choice, Firefox. A lot of people use Chrome. Uh, I'm currently using Firefox. And uh, what you see in Firefox is something called uh, the React Developer Tools. So that's an extension that you get for Firefox and Chrome as well. If you're coding in Redux, then this thing can be a lifeline. Uh, it helps to see your current state. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff in this. this. This is actually the component hierarchy that I've created. It's actually showing me at this point of time, what are the components that are present on this page and their current state. Um, so if I go back right now, I see that I'm on the login component. So I should see a form field over here where if I type a value, let's say I type some random value in the input because, you know, I love typing random values. Uh, I'm going to be able to see that particular form field rendered over here. And I actually see the value that I put over here, right? And if I put a password, let's say I'm putting one, two, three, four. I should be able to see that as well. So it helps me to validate quite a few things because I can actually see the values that I've put in there, right? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to log into the application without any further ado, because obviously you would, you would want to see what I've done uh, with the slot machine app. So I'm going to put the correct login ID and password now. I won't be displaying the password to you because you might hack it. I mean, you might. I'm not going to share the code with you, but who knows what you can do. Because you guys are amazing. All right, let's see. What was the password? There we go. That should, oops, Daisy, hold on. <sighs> and that should be the correct one. Yep, I'm logged into the application. So what you see in front of you is I've already, I'm already maintaining some state within the database. So you see some default values there that are being fetched from the database. I'm using a Apollo GraphQL as the backend. 
uh because i just wanted to check it out um it's uh, it's going around quite a bit a lot of people are using it for its simplicity um especially the way you are able to mutate and form queries and thousands of features uh, that i'm not going to keep in the scope of this video because you'll find plenty of stuff on google for graphql and you should definitely check it, check it out apollo graphql um so for the pretends of this demo what i'm going to do is if i click on the play button you're going to see a certain number combination printed over there now the number combination doesn't meet certain criteria like for example 959 will give me 5 points and this can go on forever right i'm supposed to accumulate 1000 points so that i can get a coupon over here and these are some of the coupons that i've already accumulated but i want more obviously everyone wants more because uh, you want to win at life right uh, and i i have around 37 attempts remaining okay now this can get boring because if i keep clicking play and i wait for it to get to a thousand points it might or might not do that and i'm going to run out of attempts what i'm going to do is i'm going to try a simple hack so this check this out what i can actually do is i can go to developer tools right i'm going to look for this particular component red i'm looking for the state there we go so i found the state it says 4 to 4 here right I want to hack. I want to get to a thousand points without having to play every single time. What I'm going to do is let's wait for this to finish. I'm going to actually change up the state. Let's make it five, five, five. Now a combination of five, five, five will give me uh, five hundred points, which is going to get which is going to get me closer to my goals. So I'm going to apply that now, and you see, it's applied those points. To my total over here, so that I can test the redemption of the coupon. I'm gonna click on redeem now and get my coupon. I want to test it. I wanted to test that flow. So that's why I did this. I can actually go back and change the next. I'm gonna click on play once. Okay, I'm gonna let it go to 235 points. I'm gonna try the hack again. I'm gonna make make it 555 again. I'm gonna apply it. There you go. 500 points accumulated. So as simple as that. As I play, you see that the number of attempts is decreasing, right? How do I control that? Um, I can definitely redeem a coupon. That's fine. It's going to keep me going. Uh, but in case that I wanted to debug whether I can get more attempts, I'm going to show you a very interesting hack now. Now we've already seen about developer tools, right? And I'll get back to that in a moment. But what I'm going to do now is I started the server, right? It's a it's a generic server. It's a Node.js server that's uh, running a GraphQL backend, uh, and I've just used the npm start command to start it. I'm going to stop this now. I'm going to show you something very interesting. You can actually debug within the IDE if you're running a Node.js application, and the easiest way to do that is you go to run, you click on start debugging, you get these options over here, and then you say Node.js legacy. You can also use Node.js. I'm going to use legacy for the purpose of the demonstration. And it's actually going to launch it as a Node.js app. You'll see this, see this over here. Okay. It's actually started the debugger. It started the server. I'm going to put a breakpoint here. We talked about breakpoints in my previous video. It's, it's to tell the program to stop the execution at this point for me to take an action. And I put a similar breakpoint over here. It's just a point and click kind of thing. We'll show you the breakpoint over here. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to go to the front end and I'm going to click on play. And you see I have 27 attempts remaining, right? Let's hack this. It's stuck in the debug point. If you see over here, I mean, you'll see that eventually it takes a bit of time. My PC is a little slow. There you go. And now I, I, what I can do is I can actually right click this and evaluate this in the debug console. So it's going to show me the value. What I can do now is right. There are certain values that I see over here. User dot attempts, and that's twenty six because it's deducted one because I've used up a chance. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to first print that value. It's twenty six, right? I'm going to hack it. I'm going to say I'm on 45. I'm going to apply this, right? What it's actually done right now is assign the value 45 to this and I can verify that if I hover over this. You'll see that it's applied that value. I'm going to let it go now, right? Remember the song uh, from the movie Frozen, let it go. So we're going to let it go. Okay. 
and what you'll see over here is we have 45 attempts remaining it wasn't that interesting so now i actually have 45 whole attempts remaining for me so these are certain conditions that i can simulate simulate sorry using the debugger or my french now if i click on play again it's actually going to deduct from that so i'm going to reset it um, it's kind of stuck in the debugger again. I'm going to remove the breakpoint, but I don't need it right now. Um, again, it's taking a little bit of time. It can be a little frustrating, isn't it? A little frustrating. Just bear with me for a second there. Ah, uh, there. It's stuck. Okay, let's just let it go. And it's going to deduct it to 44 now, right? So this is how I can debug my application and I can simulate certain conditions. How do I debug a React application? <clears throat> Let's say that I uh, want to debug some of the code that I've written. I can actually go to this tab here, debugger. It's called uh, Sources in Chrome, if I'm not mistaken. And this is actually showing me the login.jsx form that I used earlier, right? I'm going to try to uh, open the you know, JSX component. And this is where I'm doing all the magic to change the numbers and all of that. So this is basically the set wheel function that is setting a random value over here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it get stuck in the debugger. Okay. I'm going to click on play. It's stuck here, right? Let's do something interesting here. Go to the console. Here. All right. That's the function. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say five five five. So that should actually set the field property to five five five. I'm gonna let it go and voila. What do you see over here? You see five five five. So that's another hack that I have for you. You can only do these for certain functions like setters, right? Because those are kind of exposed for me to manipulate the values. And like this, you can evaluate some of the parts. You can also do it using components. And you can also use the debugger over here. So the best part is that you might not only just use the debugger to change certain values. You can also put the debugger to kind of check what's going on within the, within the code itself. So let's say that I want to check out what's even going on when I click on the play button. I'm, I'm going to see that it's kind of stuck at a debug point over here and I can see the state over here. You can see certain properties. Right, I can see some of the functions that I exposed. I can see the current state and I can take it forward like this one by one. So it's like, take it to the next line and so on. Now, if I look at this, this is basically showing me the grid component itself that I'm using over there. And I can actually see the props. So if I go to the console, I can even see the props, like what's going on with the props, right? And I can even see certain values with the props, like you see active status, it's true. So you can do a lot with the with the debugger that's available to you. You can use this components to kind of change state. Uh, you can use the debugger to kind of uh, check out what's going on within the code. And like I explained to you, the Node.js backend, you can actually change values and you can even debug it. Uh, and all you have to do is use these functions. Like this is to step line by line. If I put a debug point back here, if I want to go line by line, I'm going to just uh, go ahead now because I'm not showing you the front-end code. See, all the debug points that I put in the front-end, I can actually check certain states, like what's even going on. Maybe I can do the next one. So it's going to go to the back-end now. It's going to get stuck over here. Give it a minute. Takes time. Un momento. I'm not in Spanish these days. Eventually, I'm going to be doing this in Spanish. I hope so. I mean, that's the goal. Let's see, where did it end up? Did it end up on the front end? No, it's still spinning. Ah, there it is. So I can actually take it, take it forward line by line. It's going to take it to the next line. I can see the certain, I can see certain states here. I can see what's going on. And I'm going to not return this because this is going to be the JavaScript side of things. So there's a lot of potential in debugging applications like this because you don't want to restart the server every single time. You want to be able to check the current state of the application by just putting a debug point here and seeing what is even going on, right? Makes life easier for us as developers. I don't want to restart the server every single time. So if you like this video, uh, do share this with your friends 
and I would even go so far as to ask you to subscribe because I'm going to be coming out with some more videos of this sort and I hope you like them and uh, definitely give me a shout out in the comment section if you want to see similar videos or something that I can share with you. Uh, my next video uh, won't be around the, around the tech domain, it's going to be around the sessions that I'm doing with all of you through LinkedIn. Uh, I'm going to be talking about some of the do's and don'ts about working in the IT industry. This is uh, definitely related to the questions that you've asked me and uh, I'm going to be addressing all of those questions in that particular video. So watch out for that, it's going to be coming out soon. So this is me signing off. I hope you like this video.